if you're ever wondering where my sanity is, it's happily grazing on pasture. Where's your filly? Hello everyone and welcome back to Farmer Joe Homesteading. We have another farm update coming your way with of course lots of shenanigans and we have some new additions, a new species here on the homestead. So you're not going to want to miss this fun farm update. We are still waiting. Her bag is steadily starting to grow. She's still looking really loose and her ligaments are still super soft and stretchy, but we haven't had labor yet. No kids on the ground still. So I'm thinking that perhaps when I saw the slime, it might have been that she was in heat and Buddy missed it. And so she might have come into heat three weeks later with the rest of the girls. And so it's possible that she's going to kid right around the same time as her sister, just like they did last year, because their heats are always just a few days off of each other. The girls are spending all of their time being lazy, laying around. They are all looking very plump. The only one that I am concerned about is Big Mama. She is still milking like crazy and giving us plenty of fresh milk, but she's not dipping in production whatsoever. And she's not looking close like the other girls. And I know that her due date would be August 14th because that is when she was, I, that's when I saw Buddy breeding her. I know that he was breeding her on that date. Now we did have the scare and she was bleeding and I was concerned that she'd miscarried. It's possible that she just slipped one or two. It is also possible that she had a full miscarriage and lost her entire pregnancy. So we are keeping an eye on her still because it is possible that she might still kid on the 14th or around that date. But it is also possible that she completely slipped and that we will not have any kids from Big Mama for 2023. Luna is also looking really close and she's starting to loosen up and get a pretty good bag and her due date is August 19th so we're coming up pretty close to these kidding dates. In other goat news besides waiting for babies we had goat injuries this week so our girl Luna must have got her leg caught in some wire somewhere and has some scratches on her hawk. So we have been keeping a close eye on that and I've been spraying iodine on it to keep flies off and to keep her happy. And Big Mama has got an injury to her tail. We are thinking that it might actually be self-inflicted from mites. So we're going to be needing to treat our girls for mites and hopefully that will help clear up all of the mess that her tail is right now. So we've been washing that and putting iodine on it as well to get her to stop chewing on it and keep the flies off. The flies have gotten really bad, so I'm gonna need to go to town and get some fly spray of some sort to give the girls. If you're ever wondering where my sanity is, it's happily grazing on pasture. Well guys, we got sheep. We took the leap and ended up getting a herd of hair sheep to add to our homestead. Now, we've already been growing up the meat goat herd, so why add hair sheep to the farm? We actually really wanted to add hair sheep this year, but with building the barn and other things, it just wasn't gonna fit in the plan. But an opportunity came up that we couldn't pass up, and so we ended up with 11 sheep. The number one reason we went for sh with sheep is that they are actually easier to sell than goats. There isn't much of a high market for goat meat where we are, and so they have to be shipped out. Whereas live lambs, we already have a 
customer base because of my in-laws raising sheep for years. So it actually makes it easier to raise sheep for us because I know that we'll be able to sell the lambs for butcher every year. Whereas the goats can be a little bit more tricky because they will need to be shipped out for sale which isn't the end of the world, which is why we're still growing up a meat herd and we still definitely will have a lot of meat goats in the future. But adding a couple of sheep for our consumption and for sale for others just made sense for us. So we went ahead and got some hair sheep. We got a beautiful ram who is a papered registered black belly. He is really, really nice and I'm really excited about him. Our girls, we ended up with four girls for breeding stock. The ewes are all Katahdin and black belly mixes. So I'm really excited about that. Katahdins are known for being really awesome hair sheep. Um, they're listed in like the top um, for the meat varieties of sheep. So I'm really excited to have this breed of sheep here on the farm and to be able to raise them on the homestead. So like I said, we ended up with 11. We have one ram that we will be using for, for breeding. And then we got two little rams that we're going to be weathering, hopefully this weekend, um, and they will be for meat. Then we also have an older weather who's ready to butcher any day. And then we also have an extra ewe and baby, but unfortunately she is related to the breeding ram. So we will have to either butcher her or move her on to another farm. Um, so we just helped, helped out some fellow farmers and took the burden of sheep off of them and now have our own herd. Miss Betty is getting really big and she let the kids ride her this week. So we are hoping to train her to ride, even if it's just the, that the kids can sit on her back, just because uh, why not? She's already so laid back and so sweet. And so I definitely want to have her broke that the kids can jump on and ride her when they want to. Also this last week, we had an issue with mites. So check out the video we posted of treating mites in the chick house. Um, it did work. We still have a few mites on the chicks themselves, so I'm going to have to be more diligent remembering to add um, more diatomaceous earth in there until we can completely annihilate this mite problem. I'm also going to need to sneak into the coop and treat all the adult birds for mites at night because that will help. And then obviously treat all the coops. We're getting into fall, so this is kind of like a routine fall thing that everything needs to be cleaned out, sprayed, and ready for winter. It seems a bit wild to be talking about winter already, but around here, winter is longer than summer. So preparing for winter is a really important thing, and we are just a few months away. We usually start getting some real chilly temps in October, so that's not very long, guys. Well, in bunny news, all the kits are growing really well. Amber's kits in particular are hitting that super adorable squishy phase. They're starting to run around lots and they have just been so much fun to squish on. The other kits are all getting close to that eight week mark and will need to be weaned at the end of this week. In the garden, we have tons of zucchini ready and lots of peas to be picked. So that harvest season has arrived and we are so excited. All right, guys, that is everything that I have to share with you today. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel to never miss one of our farm updates because things are always moving fast around here. We hope to see you guys next time.